Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to look at my five tips for collecting physical media. Now everybody knows that uh, physical media is supposed to be on its way out, but uh, something interesting that's happened is I've been making videos for this channel is people will leave comments in the section and they'll reach out and they'll be like, you know, I really enjoy the physical collecting aspect of your channel. And uh, for all the talk of physical media dying, more and more people seem to be shifting from digital to physical media collecting. So here are my five tips. That's what we're going to tackle in this video. Uh, five tips for collecting physical media. These are the tips that I live by and maybe they'll help you. We'll be back in seven seconds. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. These are the top five reasons. We're starting with number five and we're counting down. So number five is, and it really should be number one, but it's number five. <laughs> Collect what you care about. It, it seems like it should be, <clears throat> like it should go without saying, right? But I've been looking around on YouTube. I didn't do a ton of research for this video, but I kind of wanted to see what other people were saying about collecting physical media. Um, I didn't really see a lot of people talking about it from a current standpoint where the, you know, as I, as I record this, it's 2018. Things are very different than they were even just in 2015, 2014. You want to build a physical media library now with books, movies, video games, whatever. Uh, you know, there are people out there who like, well, just buy whatever's a good deal. Buy in bulk, buy stuff you don't care about, and then you can get rid of the stuff that you don't want, and you keep the stuff that you do. And in the meantime, you have an impressive looking shelf. That's garbage. You need to buy the stuff, you know, collect what you care about. If you don't care about it, why do you want it? Like, what is it going, what good is it going to do you sitting on a shelf if you're not interested in it? So first and foremost, uh, buy the stuff that you're interested in. Collect what you care about. Ultimately, your collection is an extension of you. It's an extension of your personality. And when people look at it, you know, you have people come over, you want them to see you reflected in your collection. Uh, it's, it's an extension of who you are. So keep that in mind at all times in your physical media collection. Number four, do your research. You have to do your research. You have to be aware of what's coming out, when it's coming out. Uh, similarly, you have to be aware of what's going away. For instance, uh, Shout Factory, a company that everybody that everybody loves, um, has a Bruce Lee. They did like special editions, collectors editions of the four Bruce Lee movies, um, and they announced at the end of 2017 that their licensing agreement for those movies was expiring at the end of the year. So they're saying, hey. We're losing the license to these movies. If you want them, you should probably go ahead and pick them up if you haven't already because we're not going to be able to keep making them after the new year. So um, by being aware, by doing your research, you know you can determine, well, I want these and I better pick them up before they go out of print because once things go out of print, it's a whole other struggle. Um, and we can touch on that later in this video. But do your research. You all, also, what falls under that is be aware of the market cycles. So, like for video games, this is a good one. For video games, um, there's a nostalgia thing. You know, a few years ago, it was a nostalgia cycle for Atari games. And it was all the people that had played Atari when they were kids in the late 70s and the early 80s, and they're now like 30. And they want it, you know, not now, but a few years ago. They're like 30 and they're like, you know, I'm sitting here in this boring cubicle and I want to recapture my childhood. And the Atari market went through the roof. Currently, it's the Nintendo slash Super Nintendo nostalgia cycle where the people who uh, love that stuff in the late 80s and the early to mid 90s are... That, that's where the market is right now. That's the focus is that Nintendo, Super Nintendo era... Strangely, there's not the same kind of nostalgia for Sega Genesis, which I don't really understand. Um, but all you have to do is go to eBay and you look at the, the prices for some of this stuff. It's so high. Um, and that's why we have a Nintendo Classic Edition and a Super Nintendo Classic Edition because the nostalgia market for those, that, that's where it is right now. So this is not a great time to buy those kind of retro video games. You still can. They're everywhere but you're going to be paying a premium for most of that stuff. Uh, however, now is the time 
to be buying things for the things that are outside of that circle. So again, Atari games just like crashed a few years ago. Like you can pick up Atari games for like a buck, two bucks, like they're dirt cheap. Uh, most people just want them gone. And the people who bought them during that Atari nostalgia cycle um, got their fix and they've moved on. So now is the time to buy that. It's also a time to be buying for the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, and the Xbox. Uh, not the 360, the original Xbox. I picked up a uh, sealed Medal of Honor game a couple of months ago at a thrift store for $2.99. Those games right now, and it's building, it's, it's, it's growing, but those games right now are kind of outside of the nostalgia cycle. So if you're looking for, and you know, some of those games are always going to be expensive. They're always going to hold their value, but this is the time to be buying stuff that's not Nintendo. That's not, uh, you know, the Nintendo 64 is, is catching on. It's starting to build steam. Those prices for those games are going up. So I'd be looking a little bit later than that. Things that came after that. Build your collection that way. Be aware of the cycles and do your collecting accordingly. Number three, be patient. When you're collecting physical media, it can be very tempting to jump on the first thing you see or the, the, the best deal. Like you're like, oh, I've been looking for this. Here it is. It's on eBay and I need to get this. It's more than I want to pay, but I need to get this. No, be patient. The long game will eventually reward you. Um, eBay right now is not your friend. Now it's true, you can find things on eBay. You can find some really good deals on eBay. eBay is a good tool. And I you know, I use it myself. But don't rely on eBay because you have to think, you're on, you're on eBay looking for a good deal. You're on eBay looking for that needle in a haystack good deal. But you have to realize that there are millions of other people who are on, on eBay doing the exact same thing. And eBay used to be a good place to find some 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 great deals. You know, like I can't believe I found this for next to nothing, and you still can, but you have to be patient. Uh, you can't just jump on the first thing that you see. That applies, you know, action figure collecting, video games, movie, like so many things. Um, there there are many people out there who know what what they have is worth and that's the downside of eBay right now is that eBay drives up it's like a it's like an illusion of the market like eBay will jack prices up to a level that things aren't really worth what they can charge for them but people get caught up in that bidding war and people will think that if you if you see a, a game or a movie on okay you see an out of print movie for fifty dollars or a copy of some Nintendo game for you know for $50. If it's, if it's on there for a buy it now price, like if somebody puts that item up at a buy it now price, other people who have that item and go to put it up for sale on eBay, look at that and they're like, oh, this person's charging $50. So it's worth $50, but it's not. <laughs> That's the thing. Everybody has this uh, idea that the stuff that they have is worth whatever it's going for on eBay. And that's not the case. Uh, so be patient. Take your time, look for good deals, use price trackers. Here's something that I do. So there's a site called camelcamelcamel.com and they are a Amazon price tracker. That, that's what they do. You put in the, the UPC number or the Amazon item number of the thing you're looking for in camelcamelcamel.com and you can set an alert and you can set a price a price tier like a price barrier so like I, oh, I want you know Star Trek the next generation the complete series but I don't want to pay more than $79 for it you put that in the search tracker you put your email address in there or your I think they even can do Twitter and then if it drops below that threshold you get notified and you can immediately go and check it out pick it up eBay does the same thing you know I use eBay alerts all the time I have like so many eBay alerts going for like they'll track things, things that I want them to remember that I'm looking for. And every time somebody posts something up, I can then go like I get an email notification and I get a, a text notification. And then I can go and say, uh, is this a price that I'm willing to pay? Most of the time it's not. 
But every now and then, somebody will be, uh, they'll post something up for like a, a really good deal. Here's an example of that. Uh, the Charlie's Angels Complete Series is something that I've been meaning to add to my collection. I want the original, I wanted the original factory, the, the um, studio version. There's a Mill Creek version. I wanted the original studio version. The thing is, it's going for $100 or more most of the time. Um, it's out of print. The studio quit making it and gave the rights to the Mill Creek. So now that edition is out of print. I've been tracking it on eBay for months. Um, there've been prices, there've been good deals at $35, $45. I'm like, you know, that's better than a hundred, but it's not really what I want to pay. And just recently, uh, I got an email notification. It's actually a text notification that somebody had put it up, put the complete series up on eBay. It's used $17 and 99 cents for all five seasons. I was like, what? And I go through their page and they're just like, they're moving apparently. And they're just getting rid of stuff. It's like price to sell, trying to get rid of this stuff. So I waited and I got a great deal. And that's what I would encourage you to do. Wait for a good deal and pick things up on your terms, not on somebody else's terms. Because it's really, it's about you and what you're willing to pay. Don't pay more than you're willing to pay and be prepared to wait to get the deal that you want. Number two, know where to look. Just like this is not a great time to be using eBay or paying market prices for things, it's not a great time to be shopping retail for some of this stuff, although there are good deals to be found. But this is the time to be hitting your yard sales, your thrift stores, and your pawn shops. Because frankly, those outlets, those, those environments are the places that want the stuff gone. Pawn shops for years and years took in DVDs and Blu-rays and they'd pay, you know, a little bit of money for them and then they'd turn around and sell them for, you know, $5 a piece. I've, I've been shopping pawn shops for DVDs for years, a decade, probably more. And now, more than any other time, they want it gone. They don't want that stuff in their stores. You go into a, the average pawn shop is getting rid of their DVDs for a dollar. Sometimes you can cut deals with people. Here's another thing. Don't be afraid to haggle. If you go to a pawn shop or you go, I don't, it doesn't work at a thrift store. But if you go to a pawn shop or you go to a yard sale, haggle. Say, okay, well, you know, I found these five movies, but um, instead of paying, or, or you know, hey, hey, I have six movies. Could I just get these for five, for five dollars? Or could you throw this one in? Uh, like, it almost always works. Don't be a jerk about it. Don't be like, you know, I got these 20 movies and I don't want to pay you more than $5. Like, be realistic and be reasonable. You want to get a little bit of a deal. You want everybody to feel like they got a fair uh, a fair shake. So, like, you know, I do a lot of yard sale hopping. I went to a yard sale not that long ago, and I picked up... This guy had the Star Wars... Here's an example. This guy had the Star Wars movies, uh, the DVD versions, still sealed in the wrapper. I don't know why he hadn't watched them. It was Return of the Jedi, A New Hope, uh, and Empire Strikes Back. And they were still sealed. Now, I didn't need them, so I didn't buy them. But he was selling these things for $2 a piece. I picked up like eight of them, I think. And uh, I went over to him and I was like, listen, um, can we work something out on these? I got like eight of them. How about I just give you $10? And he was like, uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's a much better deal than what he wanted. And I ended up happy. He got rid of the stuff because he just wanted it out of his house. So that's where you need to be looking. The eBay deals, almost non-existent at this point. As, as I said in the last point, they're still there, but they're so rare. You can't, that's not the place to go right now. You want to be hitting up yard sales, thrift stores, and pawn shops because those people want the stuff, they just want it gone. And if you're collecting physical media and you know what you want and you know what you're looking for, that's great for you. Well, that brings us to number one, the most important, and it's also very simple. Number one, keep it fun. It's so easy when you get into collecting something to lose sight of, of the goal that you started out with. It can become tedious. It can become frustrating. If, you th if you're in it for like value or a speculator market, that's, that's the wrong reason to be doing it. Comic book collecting is a huge, that's a great example of what I'm talking about. Because, so I grew up in the age of, you know, when I was really getting hardcore into comic book collecting, it was the early 90s. And there were chromium covers, and there were all these variant covers, which, hey, that's back. 
you know, that didn't go away. Uh, and we lost sight of why we were collecting. We'd buy two or three of something. We'd be like, this is going to put my kids through college one day. That's the wrong reason to be collecting. Because guess what? Those books are worth nothing. Literally nothing. You can sign on to like any resale or market. You want a copy of like Bad Rock or Young Blood or whatever. Like you can find those things for so cheap. Um, the gimmick covers, they're not really worth anything because it was about a gimmick. It wasn't about the content. And those things that weren't about the content did not stand the test of time. So remember why you're doing this. Remember why you want to build a physical media library, why you want to collect. Why are you collecting? If you're collecting so that you can watch things on your terms, read things on your terms, play things on your terms without worrying about it being taken away, taken off of a cloud, um, that's, that's the right reason to be doing it. Not because you think it's going to be worth money or because it's going to have some sort of future market value because it might... Chances are that some of the stuff will, but chances are a lot of it never will. You're doing it for yourself. So keep keep it fun. Don't lose sight of why you're doing this, and that's because you want to have the stuff that you want to have. You, it's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of your personality. And if you're new to collecting physical media, you're going to find that the best part of keeping it fun is the thrill of the hunt. There is nothing like the thrill of the hunt, to be looking for something, and this plays into the being patient part, to be looking for something that you could probably go to eBay and get for too much money, but to find something out in the wild at a thrift store or a pawn shop, like, I've been looking for this movie. It's been out of print for years, and I found it, and it's a dollar. There is nothing like that feeling. It's the thrill of the hunt. When you find that needle in a haystack, there is no feeling that's better than that as a physical media collector. So uh, I would encourage you to get out there if you're thinking about doing this, if this is something that you've been doing for years, like let me know. I, I wanna know what your experiences are. If there's something that I forgot, if there's a point that you think is very crucial that I forgot, let me know, let's talk about it in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate your time. Check out serialatmidnight.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Serial Midnight. Guys, thanks again. I will catch you later.